Good evening, church family. Uh, my name is Connor Basson. I'm the youth minister here. And I wanted to uh, take a few moments to go over our prayer requests, prayer list for this evening, Wednesday. First on the prayer list is Ellen Alley. She's having a test this week related to her liver cancer. Uh, the next is a prayer request for Marshall West. He fell and injured his arm recently, but he will be seeing the doctor tomorrow. Also be praying for Diane Crook. She has been in the hospital and is now at home dealing with an uh, infection related to her recent back surgery. Then be in prayer for Molly Ferguson. Uh, praise that she is now home from the hospital. Then uh, Veronica, Carroll, Veronica Carroll, who recently uh, injured her, her feet and her hand uh, after her fall. Thankfully, she is uh, continuing to improve. So be in prayer for her and praise for the continued healing. Then Jan McClure did well with her recent cataract surgery and will have her second one done on June the 17th. Then be lifting up Linda Millwood, who is having an injection in her back tomorrow. Then Suzanne Smith will have her second cataract surgery on Monday, June the 7th, so be in prayer for her. And then finally, uh, be praying for Linda Alverson and her family uh, at the passing of her husband, Ben, who passed away yesterday morning. So no details at the time on that, but be praying for her family as they are grieving the death of Ben. So let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we come to you this day thanking you for who you are, thanking you that you are a God who is sovereign and in control of all things that nothing that happens is outside of, of your will, that you are ultimately in control, and that you care for your children, that you are working in each and every one of our lives and in the lives of these people that we are lifting up today, and that, that your, your purpose is higher than Sometimes what we can understand. But God, that through it all you are faithful and that you are working all things for our good and for your glory. And so we want to lift up all these prayer requests. We want to lift up Ellen Alley, that she would be with her as she has her test related to her liver cancer, that you would continue to give her peace during this situation. That you would be with the doctors, give them the wisdom and understanding to be able to read the test and determine what next steps should be. We pray for Marshall West, that you uh, would bring healing to his injured arm, that you again would give the doctors wisdom and insight as to what next steps are necessary. That you would pray for Diane Crook as she has had surgery and now deals with infection. That you would help her to keep the, the wound clean. That you would bring healing and care and comfort to, to what she's dealing with and to ease her pain. We want to praise you for allowing Molly Ferguson to come home from the hospital, God, that you would continue to, to work in her, her life, to bring healing, to bring health. We want to continue to pray for Veronica Carroll after her fall, that you would continue to bring full healing in that situation. We also pray 
and praise you for Jan McClure doing well with her cataract surgery. And again, pray that her next surgery would go well, that uh, the whole process would go smoothly and that she would recover well from both surgeries and be able to see well again. We also want to lift up Linda Millwood again, who is having an injection in her back tomorrow. Lord, that you would give her peace during that time. That she would not feel nervous, but that she would rest in you. And that it would help ease her pain in her back. And we want to lift up Suzanne Smith, who will have her second cataract surgery here soon in about a week. God, that you would again bring her peace, that she would not be nervous, but trusting in you through it all. And we also finally want to, to lift up Linda Alverson and her family at the passing of her husband, that you would give comfort to her, give peace to her and her family, that we as a church family would be able to care for her well, to love on her family. We pray that through this passing, though it may be hard, that you would strengthen Linda's hope in you, that, that her family would come to trust in you more. They would come to, to know that you are their God, that you are God who is in control of all things. Lastly, we just want to lift up uh, the children and the youth and the upcoming uh, activities that they have, that you would uh, be with the children during VBS this upcoming week, that you would spread the seeds of the gospel to these children, that they would learn more about Jesus, but they would also come to know him as their Lord and Savior this week. And we also want to lift up the youth as they are going away to Mission Fuge, to be at camp, to hear uh, powerful teaching and worship music, but also to do service in the community surrounding Ridgecrest. That during this camp, that the youth would grow as Christians and grow in looking more like Jesus, but they would also see the need to serve those who are in need, to, see, to, to serve those who are needy, who are poor, and that they need not only physical things done, but also they need spiritual things. They need the gospel. And I pray that that the youth would come away from camp learning more about Jesus, but also having a greater passion to do his will and to serve others and to also share the, the hope of the gospel with them. Lord, we thank you for your continued, continued faithfulness to us. And we thank you for who you are in sending Jesus who died on the cross for us and that if we would just simply believe in him that we could have eternal life with God and forgiveness of our sin we love you and we thank you for how you are bringing healing and hope to each and every one of these people in this list in Jesus name so as we move on in our prayer time this evening, we are moving on to our devotional tonight. And what I want us to, to take away from this time is that God is directing the, the personal affairs of ordinary people through extraordinary means. Again, God is directing the personal affairs of of ordinary people through extraordinary means. In the passage we are going to be looking at this evening, 
is in Ruth chapter 2. Now, many of you may be familiar with the story of Ruth, but just to give a little context of, of where we are in Ruth chapter 2 of what has just happened, uh, Ruth and Naomi, um, they were living in the time of the judges of the people of Israel, where the people of Israel went through a constant cycle of going after their own ways, following into uh, what was right in their eyes instead of what was right in God's eyes. And they were given over to their enemies. And then when things got really bad, God would, because he was merciful and loving to them and because he had made a covenant with Israel, that God then saved them through people, through ordinary people, through uh, some people maybe we don't need to imitate, um, but he saved them nonetheless through people. And so Ruth and Naomi are living during this time. We don't know exactly what year or maybe what judge they are living through, but we read that there was a famine in the land. And so Ruth and Naomi moved to Moab because that's where they heard that there was food. Because there wasn't an Ingalls or a Publix where you could go and buy food when the crops weren't going too well, but they had to go where there was food. And it just so happens that during their time, uh, a lot of tough things happened. There was the death of their husbands. And so um, they endured much pain and grieving during this time. And so they ended up having to come back to Israel um, about a decade later because they heard that there was food again, that God had shown his mercy and saving them from this famine and bringing them to back to their homeland, Israel, where there was food again. And so that's where we pick up in Ruth chapter 2. And so Ruth, uh, being a good daughter-in-law to Naomi, she takes the initiative to go and find food. And she goes to uh, a field where there would be food uh, to harvest food for her family so that they could eat. And uh, so this is where we are picking up. And so I'm going to read starting in Ruth chapter 2. Now Naomi had a relative of her husband's, a worthy man of the clan of Elimelech, whose name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, let me go to the field and glean among the ears of grain after him, in whose sight I shall find favor. And she said, Go, my daughter. So she set out and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And listen. And she happened to come to the part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the clan of Elimelech. And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem, and he said to the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered, The Lord bless you. Then Boaz said to his young man who was in charge of the reapers, Whose young woman is this? Speaking about Ruth. And the servant who was in charge of the reapers answered, She is the young Moabite woman who came back with Naomi from the country of Moab. She said, Please let me glean and gather among the sheaves after the reapers. So she came, and she has continued from early morning until now, except for the short rest. And I want us to focus in upon these words and uh, verse 3 of chapter 2. So she happened to come to the part of the field belonging to Boaz. Now we know, or we, we should know, that, that Ruth went to this field not knowing who or where she was going to, whose field it was. But it just so happened to be Boaz's field. And we continue to read in the story that Boaz was the one who would be the redeemer for Ruth, who was a widow. That she would now be able to have a husband who could then 
help uh, provide for her not only monetarily but having a family for whom she could have children who could continue the bloodline of the family of Naomi whom Ruth was uh, her daughter-in-law and it was through this ordinary circumstance of just going out into the field to find food just as we go out to the grocery store to find food for our own families or we go out to work to provide for our families it's through these simple ordinary circumstances that Ruth met Boaz who then became her kinsman redeemer as we read later on in the story of Ruth. And, and what do we read at the end of the story of Ruth? That, that Ruth had a son, and his name was Obed. And who was Obed? He was the father of Jesse, the father of David. So Obed was David's grandfather. And what do we know about David? David was the one whom God had chosen to make a covenant with, that he would have an eternal lineage. And we read through the Old Testament that though the people who were the offspring of David weren't perfect, in fact, they were disobedient to God's laws most of the time. But we do know that the one who came after David, the, the seed of David was the one who would crush our greatest enemy, who would be our redeemer, who would redeem us from our sins. His name was Jesus. And this all happened through God directing the affairs of ordinary people like Ruth, directing her to just so happened to land in the, the field of Boaz just to find food. And it was through this simple interaction that, that God was able to work, that he was directing these means for eternal circumstances, through eternal purposes, rather. That through Ruth, through Boaz, Ultimately, the Savior of the world came to redeem us, to save us from our sins, to make us right with God. And in church family, I want us to remember that God uses ordinary people like us and ordinary circumstances that we go throughout our days for extraordinary means, for eternal purposes and so I want you I want to encourage you today church family to look at your own circumstances look at your own day-to-day -day life maybe errands you need to run maybe the people who you work with and view them with an eternal purpose seeing God directing you to to be with that co-worker or maybe placing you with your, your grandchild and using that to share the hope of the gospel with these people. Because God doesn't place you in a circumstance for no purpose. He places you in each and every circumstance that you go through throughout your life for a purpose. And so I want you and to encourage you to view your life in this way, to use your life, use your friends, use your co-workers for the glory of God, to share the gospel with them, to share the hope that you have with them. Just simply saying, hey, I, I want to share the hope that I have because I've gone through a circumstance similar to you, but I've been able to get through it because of the hope I have. Jesus has died for me, that he's given me a hope that goes beyond my circumstances. So church family, be encouraged by that. Be encouraged by the message of Ruth 
and the ultimate message of, of Jesus. So as we close our Wednesday night prayer meeting, let us go to the Lord in prayer, thanking him for what he has shown us today. Lord Jesus, we come to you thanking you for your word, thanking you for how you use your word to, to speak to us, to open our eyes to how we can live for you. Lord, may we be a people who can see that the circumstances that we're going through, that God is using them for extraordinary means and for eternal purposes. Help us to see that. Also, give us boldness to be able to go out in faith to share an encouraging word with a coworker. To be able to point them to the ultimate hope of Jesus. When it may be hard, maybe when we know that they're not going to respond positively. But just to simply trust that God's going to plant that seed in their life. And simply, we need to be faithful to do that. Just to, just to share the gospel with them. Lord, we again want to lift up the prayer requests tonight that we've previously prayed for. And we just ask and pray that you would continue to work in these people's lives. That you would continue to work in each and every one of our lives. Making us look more like Jesus. Helping us to share Christ's love with others and to show Christ to this world. We love you and we thank you and we praise you for who you are. In Jesus' name.